So welcome everyone to the Global Youth Mobilization Webinar and we'll be focusing on mental health um, as we are having more people joining. Um, I would like to let you that this event is actually being streamlined on Facebook. So you can also tell um, our friends to, to view OCS or join us on Facebook. Um, and please introduce yourselves in the chats, um, the country you're coming from. Um, my name is Helga Mutasingwa, and my fellow moderator is. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Miti Gamacho. And we are both youth representatives for the Global Youth Mobilization. Um, just to remind everyone that you can get the interpretation, we have French, Spanish, and Arabic interpreters. So please um, click on the interpretation button. It's, 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 it's in the shape of the globe uh, below to choose any language you wish for, French, Spanish, or Arabic. Metty? Yes, I'm here. I, I was just hoping to see if we should, I was thinking, should we wait a couple more minutes until more people join or should we just go into the agenda? Mm. We have about okay. 40. Participants, we have people from Armenia, Nigeria, Kenya. That's great. We can wait one more minute. Okay. So we have Bangladesh, Madagascar, Kitty from China. Welcome everyone. We hope you get half fun while having a conversation with fellow young people from across the world. Cameroon, Malaysia. That's great. Just a reminder to everyone, if you need an interpretation, we have French, Spanish, and Arabic interpreters. Please click the interpretation button below your screen. It's a globe-shaped um, icon. Okay, I think we can... We can start. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Helga. I, I uh, welcome everyone. I hope you have a very educational yet fun time with us today uh, with your co-moderators. Uh, I will be speaking on the agenda. So first we have our welcome and introduction, which we've been doing so far. Uh, Helga has very well described our house rules. Um, uh, and then we will have a slight presentation on the overview of the global youth mobilization, the organization the movement that me and Helga are part of the board for. And then we will have an introduction of the GYM impact reports that we were able to publish through this project. And then we will be discussing about the exciting youth led solution projects that we've been doing. And then we will discuss on the lessons learned and we will be developing recommendations on that. And lastly, we will have uh, interesting practitioner reflections and Q&A session where we can all interact and share our knowledge. So it's a pretty packed hour. We will try to use our time as effectively as possible. Uh, welcome and I hope you have a wonderful stay. Thank you, Matty. Um, once again, welcome. Um, for those who have just joined us, I'd like to um, share the house rules again. I um, would like to consider that this space is actually for everyone, therefore harmful or derogatory language will not be accepted. Um, please remember to mute yourself. Should we speak, um, please raise your hand and we'll unmute you and let you speak. Um, alternatively, just feel free to write your comments in the session. I'll be happy to read them out um, on your behalf. Uh, please still remember that you have the translations of French, Spanish and Arabic available for this session and click the button um, which has a shape of a globe um, icon for you to choose the language you wish if it's not English that we are speaking. 
And also um, just a reminder that this session is being streamlined on Facebook page of the Global Youth Mobilization. Um, and also I'd like to to invite everyone to have fun um, and interact through the chat box. Back to you, Metty. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this is very exciting for us. Uh, the, we are going to talk about the Global Youth Mobilization. So this is something that me and Helga, have been a, Helga and I have been a part of for a little over a year now. It's a movement of young people taking action to improve the lives of the now and in a post COVID-19 world, we're hoping. Uh, and it aims to address the negative impact of the pandemic, especially on young people and to support them build back better. Uh, it was supported by big six youth organizations and the World Health Organization, as well as the United Nations Foundation. So part of these organizations, uh, I am here representing the World YWCA. We have the World YMCA, the Scouts, we have WAGS, uh, IFRC, and of course, there we are, <laughs> uh, and of course the award. And this has been a very huge part and we have been doing a lot of impactful work over the past year and a half. Next slide, please. Yeah. So I'd like to share the three key areas of work that you have been doing. Uh, first of all, it's the grassroots activation for the local solutions, which we'll hear about in a few minutes. Um, these, there has been a call for young people to submit the solutions to the health and societal COVID-19 challenges, where mental health is part of that um, category. And there is more than two million US dollars available for small funding opportunities for young people and youth-led organizations, but also accelerator programs to scale up the effective ideas that you have. And the second area is driving national change. So there has been activation of the national networks of the big six, which Meti has mentioned in response to the impact of COVID-19 on young people and their local communities. And the third work is on the championing for young people. Um, we are advocating for changes in policy, improved representation of young people and global action to overcome the impacts of the pandemic. And that's why we are here at a global level speaking, but also sharing our experiences. Um, and the big six and their reach um, is in more than 190 countries. Um, and 250 million young people have been involved in programs on a yearly basis. Uh, youth engagement specialists with programs based on non-formal education and learning, which we champion a lot, uh, community services, life skills, and sustainable development. There's also, it, we also structured differently from membership organizations through to social franchise, and this capacity and size varies significantly at a country level. So all these big six organizations have different levels and um, activities as per member organizations or at a country level. And we've been able to be diverse and we reach uh, um, a lot of countries. Um, and this basis on the, on the organizations or one of the big sixes partnership in those countries. So powering change, um... powering change, young people leading the COVID-19 response and recovery impact report. Um... In February of 2022, the GYM was able to launch a new impact report uh, with this title to highlight the reach and investment in young people globally to date. Uh, the report, which includes case studies of global led programs, projects, highlights a series of policy recommendations for multinational agencies and institutions, governments, policymakers, and corporations um, to address and prioritize the needs of young people and future generations. So uh, we're very happy to announce that this is impact report is available on our website and you can go ahead and look at it there. And I'm sure that the link will also be shared in the chat. So you can also head over there as well. Next slide, please. So, and now uh, I would like to, following this, I would like to invite everyone to watch the next video that's only a few minutes that's just like a minute and a half uh, to describe most of the work that we've been doing and about this report
The impact of the pandemic has put young people to the test all over the world. It has also revealed our collective strength. Powered by the Big Six, the world's largest youth organizations, with the support from the World Health Organization, the United Nations Foundation, and the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund, the global youth mobilization is supporting young people to lead the fight against the impact of COVID-19 in every corner of the planet. Our actions are improving communities and transforming lives. Over 200,000 young people are mobilizing to support local solutions and national projects in 77 different countries. We are changing the way youth development funding works to make it more accessible, more flexible, and more responsive to the needs of young people. The national organizations of the Big Six have been re-energized to tackle the negative impacts of the pandemic. Our energy has been focused on four key areas. Young people are tackling loneliness and isolation wherever they are found. The work of youth organizations in Mongolia is bringing hope to thousands of people living with mental health illness. Our project COCO is to help and support young people through youth development center where they will be able to receive mental health advice and engage in physical activities like playing tennis and darts. In Albania, girls and young women are opening access to mental health services and combating gender-based violence. These examples are just part of the story. Young people have so much more to give and to achieve. Wherever in the world we find adversity, wherever the pandemic has left its mark, we are organizing to make a positive difference. The only thing that our communities need to continue this work is you. Your actions can make a difference. By supporting youth-led decision-making and youth-focused policies, you are helping to build a better, healthier world. Invest in, in the, the power of young people today. That was an amazing video. I hope you captured something. And that's an introduction to our conversation for now, which is about mental health. And as we know, it is a big problem. And according to WHO, um, the pandemic has disrupted the mental health services in about 93% of the countries worldwide. And that means there has been a demand for mental health support to tackle the loneliness and isolation, which has increased. And there is a research that found out that nine in 10 young people say that loneliness made their mental health worse during the pandemic. As you understand, there was um, isolation. So that led to increase in loneliness, um, leading to mental health um, worsening. And it has been seen that in low income countries and places experiences, um, experiencing humanitarian crisis, the pandemic has exacerbated pre existing stress, the anxiety, and depression. Um, and according to an IFRC, the Red Cross report in Afghanistan, the pandemic has significantly increased the anxiety levels with restrictions causing spikes in loneliness, depression harmful drug use, self-harm, and suicidal behaviors, especially in young people. So, as we've said, uh, with the global youth mobilization, it's for the youth, by the youth. I'd like to invite our speakers who are going to share their experiences, who have benefited from the local solution support, on what they're doing in their communities and how they've supported their communities through mental health um, activities. Um, I'd want to start uh, to invite Thea from Slovenia with her project called MEPI. Hello everyone. Thank you Helga for the invite. Uh, I'm Thea from Slovenia and our project uh, that we actually um, did in the last year and we are still continuing is boost camps 
uh, basically what Helga said uh, before about the rise of the anxiety, other mental dis disorders, depression, loneliness, we all saw that uh, also in Slovenia, the numbers went up the roof, 40% more hospitalized young people due to suicides and, and uh, other issues. And we were quite shocked about that. So that, that's why we decided to make something when the restrictions ended during the summer period, we decided to make three or four uh, summer camps for youth between the ages of 13 to 18. Um, and we actually uh, make, we made a plan to uh, give young people a chance to make up for the missed opportunities to hang out with friends, uh, to make meaningful connections. Um, that's why we decided to make two camps for uh, sport and skill oriented so that we they learn new stuff, they actually um, enjoy sports together with other peers. And one, uh, one camp was oriented into mental health, exploring basically the creative side of, uh, of each one and talking about um, their issues they have, just to make an open and safe space to talk about everything they want to. And one camp that is still uh, still about to come is in the fall. Uh, it's a business camp where we wanted to give like develop entrepreneurship, business skills, um, because in those two years, basically young people didn't have anything of those non-formal education and we were very saddened by it. Um, and the result of it, well, we have now about 86 youngsters that are happy. Um, they explore themselves on those camps. They opened up to new activities, no new experiences, um, and they opened up themselves to other people, uh, which which was a problem in those two years. Um, we also decided that we wanted to measure the impact of those camps. So we did a little pilot research with the participants of those three camps that were that were already executed. Um, so we give, gave them a questionnaire on the first day and on the last day, and we saw an increase of well-being in those five days. So imagine what a, like an effort, everyday effort would do for those kids. But if, if five days did all of this, then we can do a lot by doing something every day. Um, they also, it, it also showed an increase in interpersonal comp competencies. So they actually developed more sense how to talk with others, how to make connections, how to make friends, uh, because some of them said that they kind of lost the touch how to be communicative, like, how to network and stuff like that. Um, and those results, the increase in well-being especially, made us realize that camps like this are needed in the future also. We, we decided that like the well-being camp and the business camp and sport and skill, skill camps will, will be a regular part of our work on MEPI in Slovenia because it, it has such an impact that we don't want to give that away anymore uh, when we got the taste of it. So we want to continue now with it um, and just give a safe space to young people to, to explore themselves, to make meaningful connections, not only with their peers, but also with adults. So actually, they see that we are not boring or anything else, but we are actually down to fun and want to have a change also for them. So that's it about our boost camps. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tia. Um, and I want to encourage the participants to send their questions to Tia in the chat boxes, and then we'll get back to, we'll be, Tia will be able to respond to those questions. Um, I'd like to, invite our next speaker, who is Nera Tiakoub from Nigeria um, with the We Stand Youth Network. Welcome, Nera. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paleni. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for having me. I, my name is Nera again, once again, and um, I'm the team lead at uh, We Stand Youth Network Nigeria. Um, thank you once again to Global Youth Mobilization for the opportunity to touch lives and bring new narratives to our, my community and the communities of every one of us that is volunteering in, in with We Stand Youth Network to create awareness on mental health and provide psychosocial support resources so, um, so far, we have 
reached out to not less than 5,000 young people. And we have reached out to not less than 5,000 young people caught across secondary schools and the wider youth communities. Um, so far, um, there are more schools calling us, you know, when people hear about things happening, they, 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 want, they want to be part of the impact story, they want to be part of the success story of this project, and um, even those ones who we've reached out to are asking when we're going to come back again, and they have already um, brought up the ideas of, hey, we want a mental health club, because um, we know that we have so much deficiencies, we have so much there's a gap in the mental health aspect of our country. As it is today in Nigeria, we barely have a mental health um, policy that is working. And so we, we, we are also supporting the development of a, of a, policy, of a policy, policy framework. Um, permit me to use my, my slides. I'm not going to share because I'm, I have it on a different device. I tried to link up with um, into the me meeting on my tablet, but it won't work. I don't know why. So, um, sorry. Okay, so we have our objective so far has been to provide to, please excuse me, let me hold some people. Some people are around me making noise. I don't know if you if you have feedback on the call from the noise around me. No, we can hear you properly. It's, it's okay. all right. Okay, thank, yeah. thank you. Right. Okay, so uh, we have objectives and then so far we've been able to exhaust our three objectives. And um, one of the objectives is to help young people to recognize their mental health and psychosocial support needs, as well as those of others around them. You know, usually around us, I would say this again, I've said this again in various calls that we've had with um, Paleni, our, our former project lead, um, that's Ashley and, and a lot of others, even from the YWCA, that usually around here, when young people are suffering from mental health disorders, you get to hear things like village people. There's a particular um, nomenclature that and a label that is easily attached to these young people. They begin to, people begin to say they are village people uh, after them. And in other words, that's to say that they have something to do with witchcraft or sorcery. So, you know, when we, we, when we, when we got to, to our, our project beneficiaries and communities and we, we told them, hey, these things are for real. It's even more prominent now because of the COVID-19 pandemic that forced a lot of young people to live in isolation. You know, a lot of people were bored. A lot of women and youth were locked up with their abusers and, and even their sources of livelihood was, was lost. So, you know, they began to see reasons with us and they began to say, yes, you know, I from day one, these people be, be started behaving this way, that way, that way, and this is where it is today. So definitely it's not village people who are after them. And um, even those around them, they began, we know of few people who are around our community have began to tell people that, oh, we see these people behave this way. We see that those people behave this way. It's not, they don't have anything to do with sorcerers. They have nothing to do with witchcraft. They are only displaying, um, um, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are only displaying symptoms of something that was neglected from, from, from a particular point of their lives. And, you know, definitely the COVID-19 pandemic also um, heightened this among them. So we also have beneficiaries who, we also, one of our objectives is to make beneficiaries, is to help beneficiaries to become more aware of their mental health and psychosocial support resources and social media pages or mobile helplines. Um, what we've tried to do is that we, we looked at, we assessed um, the, the mental health um, needs of people. And we also looked at the social media platforms that are prominent in Nigeria. We have Twitter, we have, um, we have Facebook, we have Instagram. And we decided, okay, let us storm these social media um, um, platforms with the message about mental health. We have opened accounts there. We post what we do. We, we tweet, we have, 
we, we have had a Twitter live um, event. We haven't had another one, just one, but we haven't had, a, we've had several Zoom meetings with um, our volunteers doing trainings, doing um, 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 awareness for all other young people who want to be part of this, but we can't have them gathered in one place. Rather, we would use um, Zoom and other, and other um, uh, would I say, uh, technology tools. So also once, please excuse me. No problem, Nerat. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, we have identified a few things, which is, um, you know, the stigma around mental health. So please um, feel free to, for the participants, feel free to send the questions, the comments to Nerat, as well as to Tear, and we'll be happy to read the questions um, and they'll be available to respond to those questions. Um, Nera, thank you. So no problem. We'll have a chance maybe to get back to you when the participants get to ask questions. So I'd like to invite our next speaker, who is called Alexandra, um, with the uh, with the organization called Scouting for Balance from Poland, uh, representing WAG. Welcome, Alexandra. Hello, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm Alexandra and I'm Polish Scouting Association and we prepared the, um, the project uh, Scouting for Balance. And I would like to tell about uh, that project a bit. Uh, the main goal of uh, scouting in young people nurture uh, is in a young people nurture and helping in their development. Uh, so we can't forget that to proper development, one of the most important thing is psychical uh, health. So in the COVID time, uh, we decide to organize uh, psychological help for our members. And we focus on uh, free working areas. Uh, firstly, we open the helpline in organization. And uh, in that line uh, work five psychologists, uh, for example, me, uh, who are also scouts. And we are uh, waiting for uh, people for their calling uh, from Monday to Friday in afternoon. Uh, so there is, uh, everybody has possibility to, to call. And um, we started our work in November, 2020. And now I can tell you that uh, we have many calls in a very various uh, issues. Uh, and some people call with their mental health problems and others um, ask how to help others. And um, <clears throat> this, um, secondly, uh, we conduct uh, research on the psychological uh, needs. Together with, the, uh, with a specialist from the university, we created a special tool, uh, to, um, special tool to check what problems uh, the scouts are struggling with. And uh, we are sending that to all guides in um, association. Uh, and uh, now uh, we are waiting for results. And after we have the plan uh, to long, uh, long-term activities. Um, the, the last element uh, of our project is a workshop uh, that we talk, uh, told before the name that is uh, Scouting for a Balance. And we are showing uh, to the scouts uh, how they can care about their self, uh, how care about well-being uh, and stay in balance of the life. And uh, on that project for the workshop, we also created a special materials for participants of workshop where uh, there are mental health uh, advices. For example, what you can do when you feel too much stress, what you can do when somebody needs to help, which is the steps of the helping for calling if somebody has a suicide thoughts. And also in that materials, there are exercises for doing at home, for uh, the um, for focus on yourself or your psychical um, stuff. And I can tell you uh, that 
we knew that the young uh, people ha need help in that part of their life. But to this moment, we didn't know uh, that they are struggling with so hard problem and that our project will be ne so necessary. Uh, and um, in fact, uh, for uh, us, it's just the beginning of the uh, work because we plan to do more and more and uh, put uh, impact our, uh, our solutions in all Poland. Uh, in all, all, all country. So I hope that uh, we will help to the people. Thank yes. you so much, Alexandra. That was amazing. Um, and please, if you want to know more about the projects of what our guest speakers have shared about, the links have been shared in the chat so you can read more. But please, please have um the questions shared and if you wish you can raise your hands um and you can ask in either languages provided french spanish and arabic as well as english we have interpreters so feel free but also you can send your question in the chat or comments and we'll be happy to read them out so as you're waiting for the comments, I'd like to let everyone know that we have a guest speaker. Her name is Joanna Lai from UNICEF. Um, she'll be speaking with us a little bit later while you're waiting for the questions in the chat. There's a question from oh, Dennis. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Welcome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone from Tanzania, Africa. I'm so excited to be here today with all my fellow youth. In this topic, I've observed a lot of mental problems with our fellow youth, especially here in Tanzania and part of East Africa as well. And one of the, of the, of the big problem has been the, the awareness about the importance of the vaccine. And uh, it's so low. And, and I, I had COVID before, and I experienced how, how dangerous it was. And when it came to, to the vaccine thing, I didn't think twice. I had to do it immediately. But for my fellow youth here is a big problem. So how, how can we really uh, prepare something that will surely raise the awareness of this youth who we expect them to be the, the tomorrows or the current manpower in our country and for, for, for many other areas? How, how are we prepared to really do a project across Africa, East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, to raise the awareness of the, the significance of the vaccine so that we can serve this. Because I, I am a certified John Maxwell leadership trainer and a life coach. And I've, I have come across so many youth disturbed in that area. So how can we really join forces together to serve these people? Thank you, Dennis, for a very good question. If I got it well, it's on the vaccination, right? So one of our speakers, please, if you can just volunteer to respond to Dennis. So what I can say a little bit, um, it's an interesting question on the vaccination. Um, if I got you well, it's on the awareness and what should be done for the intake of the vaccination, knowing that that gets to protect us from COVID-19. So I think it's more of the conversations that we have right now. And I think we had the same conversation last week about 
instance on vaccination, you can get it on our platform in Facebook. So that's going to be a very good um, direction. Um, with this kind of situation, a conversation which is around mental health, I think we can read, uh, we can have a conversation on mental health, and then I can refer you to the conversation which the youth had last week on, on, on vaccine hesitancy. I thank you so much for that conversation. Due for the good question, um, due to time, please um, send your questions into the chat. Um, to all those um, raising your hands, and I'd like to invite. Um, I would like for us to go to the next conversation so that we can have um, a breakout session for um, a conversation. And I'd like to share the lessons learned or the recommendations that we'd want to top up when we have a conversation in our breakout um, sessions. Uh, we have a few policy recommendations to the government, policymakers, and communities, whereby uh, as youth would want um, equal access um, of healthcare services for children and young people, especially on mental health as a key priority, but also to continue funding the youth-led mental health services as the ones have been shared by our speakers and um, have the further um, local solutions or adaptive uh, programs that can be supported by the government, like non-government organizations, as well as the, the government to collaborate so that we can have the best mental health services, especially that are led by, by the youth. Um, so I'd like to invite you to have a deeper conversation on these um, recommendations in the breakout sessions, whereby Hannah will be leading this activity, and taking us to, to different groups. <laughs> So while we are waiting to be taken into uh, breakout sessions, there is a link that has been shared to fill in the Google form, but then we'll rejoin after our breakout sessions for further details.
Hello, everyone. Well, welcome back from the breakout rooms. Uh, people are still joining back in, so let's give them a few more seconds and then we'll continue with our sessions. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone back. I hope you had a fun engagement um, and you shared your ideas. So if we can have one minute each uh, for the group, for the moderators of those groups to share a summary of the recommendations that people shared. Maybe um, Metty, probably you had a summary. <laughs> Can start with you. Sure. Um, our great our breakout session was great. We discussed on a few areas, but most of it came down to how unemployment effect has a huge impact on mental health, and how we can do different things and using different ways to engage young people into different works so that they can be more engaged, they can feel more satisfied with the work that they do, and that has a huge impact on mental health. Um, so yeah, that, that was mostly what we discussed in our group. We had a very short amount of time. I wish it was longer. Thank you, Helga. Back to you. Thanks. I think it was the same with me. Um, different from what you were shared, um, it came at a point of um, having a mental health education in the education curriculum so that people or the young people can learn about it but also see how we can provide basic first aid on the mental health uh, problems just the way they're educating about malaria how to prevent malaria on HIV we should include mental health in the curriculums but also enforce the implementation I mean policy enforcement there might be a policy but we have to make sure it is being implemented and young people not being overlooked, but being supported because they have mental health problems. So they should be thought about and be supported, but also be um, invited into innovation and given ideas. So that's a summary with what was given in my group. I think we had other groups, but also please feel free to share your ideas in the Google document. Yes, Hannah. Yeah, in my group, um, some really, really interesting discussions. Um, I had Alexandra from WAGS in my group, so we talked a lot about the specific challenges that young girls and young women face um, regarding mental health. So access to appropriate health care. Um, Olabunmi talked about his project in Nigeria, um, which aims to tackle this. And I think... Um, also a bit about you know what what um what governments have to uh, be, what responsibility governments hold to be able to tackle some of these problems so hopefully those mm -hmm. uh, recommendations will go into the google, google form as well mm -hmm. thank you so much that was interesting did you have any other group i think those those um, in the cause of time, I believe, um, I'd like to invite a guest speaker whom I said prior, um, Joanna Lai, uh, the Adolescent Health Specialist, Mateno Nibon, and Adolescent Health Unit from UNICEF to provide our insight as an expert in, in mental health, especially for young people. I know. Thank you so much, um, Helga, and thank you to all of you. Just hearing about the work that you're doing, the questions that you're asking, it's um, so much needed in the field of mental health that we're working that you know is really evolving. And a lot of you talked about, you know, addressing mental health problems. And when we look at mental health as a spectrum, I think there is positive mental health, there is, you know, mental disorder, and then there is in the in-between, which many of us fall within. And that is important. I think a lot of what you guys are saying uh, with, you know, what you're doing in Poland and Nigeria, of letting people have a good understanding about mental health and feeling that 
um, they can ask for support even when they don't have a very serious condition. You know, all of us are able to reach out, ask for support, um, because what you're talking about with, you know, unemployment, coming out of COVID, dealing with uncertainty, um, we have we look at mitigating the risk factors, but also promoting those positive fa factors that can help young people increase their ability to overcome these difficult situations. And when we when we look at what those are, um, having personal internal resources to cope, how you manage your uh, difficult emotions, how you uh, take care of uh, your stress levels, how do you uh, not only solve problems, but there are some problems that you guys are talking about that are very complex. You may not be able to solve all of them right now, but how do you manage, manage um, those challenges in the meantime? Um, so having supportive peer and social networks, um, caregiver support, which we've heard so much from young people um, not really receiving the way that they would like. So maybe interventions and policies that also work with the caregivers um, to understand what young people are going through, how they can support rather than perhaps add much more pressure, um, help them guide. Also having supportive educators. Um, and then there are some contextual things like you mentioned that are very real, right? That young people need spaces to, to talk, to do activities, to build their skills for employment. Um, because when things are feeling very uncertain, having aspiration, knowing that you're moving towards something, um, I think is important when uh, your future feels unstable. We hear a lot of people turning to different things um, to cope. Uh, ma ma we call it maladaptive way of coping, but maybe ways that are not very helpful for them to cope. Maybe that's substances, maybe that's other things. And they get, they tell us, you know, people always, um, kind of blame us, why are you guys doing these things? But they never ask us why, you know, and they don't have those other alternatives. So we really wanna be able to create other alternatives, support them to cope in other ways. Um, and yeah, I think what you guys are saying um, and what you bring very much, I think to your peers is this feeling of hope. Things are uncertain and challenging, but hope is such an important mediator um, for managing and navigating these stressful events. And I think um, also not feeling alone. You know, I think these are all very normal responses that people are having to a very difficult situation with COVID, um, with other instabilities, uh, modern stressors. Um, so I think, you know, the peer support aspect is also really important. And, you know, basically what you guys are doing, we need more of it. So your, your point about how we bring and work between uh, government and organizations like UNICEF with uh, young people like you to be part of the solution. I think with when we're talking about prevention and promotion for mental health, one of the things that's important is that um, young people aren't just sitting there waiting for services to come to them. Prevention and promotion has a big role for young people to be part of that solution. And in fact, your generation more than um, prior generations, I think, have an understanding and acceptance for what mental health actually is. Uh, so you're not only stepping out to make that change for yourself, but for future generations, I think um, you know mental health will finally get the same attention uh, that physical health is, uh, which is very critical um, in all of our affecting our work, our physical health, um, the opportunities that we have. So. Um, I will take a look. I, I know we had short time. I would love to talk to all of you more. Perhaps we'd have more conversations in the future. I'll put also some tools, some materials that we have um, from UNICEF side, work with young people closely to develop um, some, some training opportunities perhaps as well that we can um, look forward to together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joanna. That was very enlightening. Um, and it's going to be very helpful. As you can see, we have more young people passionate about mental health and we're doing a lot in our communities. So the tools that you're going to be sharing are going to be very helpful for us. So thank you so much. Um, we are out of time, sadly, and I know we might have um, more questions. Okay. We have an offer for one question from any participant for Joanna before leaving. So please, any question we have an offer? Anything you'd want to get from Joanna? 
I think um, as we're waiting for a question, that means the tools would be very, will be accessible through Jim, right? Um, or how do you get the, the materials or the tools, if you can help us with that, Joanna? I will, I, I can put it, it maybe is the best thing for me to enter some of those resources in the Google Docs. Mm -hmm. Or I can send it to um, you, Helga, and Peleni, and maybe you can circulate to the participants. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's of very course. helpful. Yes. Okay. Um, what's the initiatives young people can take to help each other in the improvement of mental health? So, uh, you know, there's a couple of things, you know, uh, I think by participating in some of the activities I've already seen you doing, you know, as peer supporters, as um, campaigns, and honestly, even an, on an ind individual level, reaching out to, to other people and having conversations, as simple as that, uh, makes a really big difference because that connection, um, knowing that you're not alone, uh, is such a protective factor for our mental health. Um, of course, there are trainings. Um, UNICEF has a package, for example, called I Support My Friends. Uh, we also have regional kind of networks and country level groups for young champions around different topics. You know, mental health is one of them, but we know mental health is also affected by other issues, sexual and reproductive health, climate change, physical activity, nutrition. So, um, being part of all of these spaces and, and not just treating mental health as one specific thing, but seeing it integrated across um, in your initiatives and in your work, everybody can really play a big role. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna. That was a question from Omar. Um, what I would ask the participants, please continue engaging global youth mobilization in our social media platforms. You can get us on Twitter, Instagram as well as Facebook and this video will be there. There is an email on our website which you can reach out and you'll get more details about local solutions about global youth mobilizations and please keep on sending your um, applications to get these funds and let's continue support your, supporting our communities as young people. Matty? Yes, uh, thank you everyone who joined us and took the time to join us. Thank you to everybody that took time and efforts to facilitate all of this. And of course, thank you to my co-host Helga uh, for your time and for the wonderful discussions that we were able to have. Uh, please do visit our website. Do reach out to us on social media. Uh, again, just thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, night, whatever time zone that you're in. Thank you. And thanks to the people in the background. Hannah, yes. Helene, and others. That was so fun. <laughs> and see you next time. Bye.